Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video. It is me, Desiree, and today we're gonna be talking about fails. Yes, it's that time of the month. It is fails time. So I tried a lot of different stuff this month. Uh, there was just a lot of stuff coming out I wanted to try, and you know, there's gonna be some stuff. There's bound to be some stuff I just don't like. So I have just a handful of things here because although there were some things I thought were kind of, yeah, they were okay, they weren't enough to be like, no, I wouldn't recommend them. These are products that I, I don't know if I just wouldn't recommend them. There are a couple that I wouldn't recommend, but you know, not everything works for everybody, you know? And for the most part, these things are just aren't my preference. I just don't have the skills to make them work. But there is one thing in this basket. It made me so angry and I feel like I'm gonna go off the rails when I start talking about it. So please keep in mind, you know, these are, these are inanimate objects. If I say I don't like something, it just means I don't like the thing. It doesn't mean I don't like you. It's okay to have a difference of opinion. That's what makes YouTube fun, right? So let's jump in and let's talk about a fail that has redeemed itself. So this is the CoverGirl Ageless Lash Plumping Mascara. And I did talk about this in my rating drugstore mascara video. Uh, I, just, I just don't think it really does anything. I find that it's very similar to um, Maybelline Great Lash, where it just kind of makes your lashes look black and that's it. It wouldn't lengthen, wouldn't plump, wouldn't separate. Just really nothing. It would just make them look darker than they were. And that was kind of it. I thought that's way too expensive for a mascara like this. Then in comes one of the best things I've tried all month. Definitely going to be one of the best things I've tried all year. The Maybelline Sky High Tinted Primer. I can't. I almost want to redo that video and use this mascara because it's so dramatically different. So this mascara normally just makes the lashes look black. It's really blah. It really does nothing. But with primer, this mascara, like, it's incredible. Like, I can't believe it. It looks like I got falsies on. It's amazing. So this mascara, this primer will make your junky mascaras amazing. Like, I've been wanting to try it with other mascaras I don't really like that much. I want to try it with the telescopic lift because this one I find, you know, just okay. I don't really get the hype on it. Um, I want to try it with this primer and see if it can like change my mind on it. I also want to try it with the Rare Beauty Mascara, another one that I think is just kind of fine. Uh, but yeah, I've been loving that primer and it has made me love this mascara. Although it was a fail, it has redeemed itself. So I'm putting it back in the mascara drawer here. Okay, an actual fail that I can't find any redeeming qualities in is the number seven lip and cheek tint in the shade Cherry Blossom. I was so, so, so excited about the new makeup that number seven was coming out with. I love the brand. I like to try everything they have. And now that I say that, I also bought the stick foundation and I was just like beside myself with excitement to try that. It didn't work out. I find it to be just really stiff, trying to glide it on the skin. It was really stiff, uh, really difficult to blend. It did not look good on the skin at all. It just kind of sat on top, broke apart really easily, just, just not very good. So I returned that. But this, this is something I was excited about because I haven't seen number seven come out with a cream blush before. And people ask for cream blush all the time at my work. It's crazy. So I was like, yes, finally one I could recommend, one from number seven. And at first, this looks like a great texture. It kind of reminds me of the Ilia, Ilia Hazy pigment or something like that. It's the same kind of texture, really, really pretty. So I'm gonna paint my nails black, I swear, so you don't have to keep looking at my uh, smashed fingernail. But anyway, the texture feels really, really good. It's really smooth. It feels kind of thick and rich, but not in a thick way where it's gonna be kind of hard to blend. But it feels great and it looks really good in a swatch. When I tried to put this on my face and I actually filmed a video, I filmed a video called uh, Quick and Easy or Light and Fresh Drugstore Makeup Using New Products. And cause I just thought this was gonna be great and I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna use it. And it looked so awful on my face. There is something about this tone of baby pink that on me looks white. Not just light, but the actual color white. Like white like the packaging. And it was barely pink. I mean, it was there with, you had to look at with a microscope to see the pink. It was mostly just 
a big white circle that I put on my face. It also dissolved all the makeup underneath, so it was like bare skin with a white blotch. It looked horrible. It looked so bad that I did not put the video up and I ended up redoing it with different products because this just ruined all the makeup. I actually ended up just putting foundation over that and covering it all up because it looked so bad. I don't know if it was just this color, the color Cherry Blossom, but I don't want to try any other ones and it was just just a big disappointment for number seven because normally I really like the brand. This was an eyeliner from Rimmel, their clean and their kind and free line. This was the clean eye definer in the shade Pitch. It's just a black eyeliner. I did buy uh, the green one and the purple one and I do like those, but the black one, I don't know what it is about this one, but it just kind of like, I don't know, it doesn't hang on at all. And Rimmel has some really good like stay put eyeliners but this is not one of them. Maybe on the upper lash line it might look really nice, but I used this on the waterline, and before I knew it, it was all gone, and it was all out here on the corners of my eyes. It was all just a mess. Did not like it at all. Um, I mean, I'm gonna keep it. I'm sure I could use it for like the top of the lash line, but on the waterline, it was a mess. So not one of Rimmel's best liners. I have a little eyeshadow quad here from CoverGirl. This is, this is the clean color, clean fresh quad in the shade Cool Berry. So I did buy two of these. I have the other one. Did I already put it away? I had the other one there. It's called something else. And I did really like that one. All the shades were great, except for one. Um, three shades in that one are great. One of them is really chunky. And I just think they're way, way too expensive for what they are and for the hit and miss quality, you know? Uh, but this one, I just didn't like very much at all. It had two mattes in here, two shimmers. I think, okay, hold on. Those are the two mattes, those are the two shimmers. The shimmer quality is really chunky. It does not look very good on the eyes. Um, I did use this in my What's New with CoverGirl video and I hated that eyeshadow so much. I was getting so frustrated. I had to edit out so much of the frustration of me putting on that eyeshadow. I really disliked it a lot. The quality, the blendability, the chunkiness of the shimmers. They don't stick on the lid if you have anything on at all. I ended up having to remove all of the color on my eyelid in order to get the shimmer to stick on. Just really bad. This one was really bad. I don't remember the name of the one I did like. I'll put it here on the screen. That's the one I liked, but three out of the four shades are really good. Three out of the four. Three out of the four shades are really good. Um, better quality in that one. This one, not so much. Wish I saved the receipt. This one, this was kind of a, a sad disappointment here. It's from LA Girl and it's the Pro Matte HD High def Definition Long Wear Matte Foundation. Why did they put HD and then High Definition right after it? Is it called High Definition, High Definition? Anyway, um, I have really been wanting to try some stuff from this brand, but I don't find anything that I actually want. I go up and down the display and I'm like, none of this. I don't want to try any of it. I don't want to try any of this stuff. The packaging, it just doesn't appeal to me. But yesterday we were at CVS and I told my boyfriend, pick something out from this brand that, I, that, that you want me to try because I can't figure it out. I don't know what I want. And he picked out one of these little eyeshadow quads, the Ilux, um Eyeshadow Quad, this is the shade Glamorize. It's the purple one. So we'll see if this works out. But uh, I really wanted to try this foundation because I thought it might be um, similar to the LA Colors Truly Matte Foundation. That one's awesome. But this just did not look good. Oh my goodness. This was one of those days that, no, this was the day. Okay, I told a story in my video that I did, the Pixie Setting Mist video where the makeup fixing mist fixed my disgusting looking makeup and I had used this. This was the foundation I put on that looked horrible. Then I tried to cover it up with another thing with concealer. Then I tried to cover it with a high coverage powder and I was just trying to like cover up the mess that this foundation had made. And then that fixed, that mist fixed it all. And I really want to like this. I think I'm going to try it again like in a, um, a full face of fails but trying to make it work video. But the texture, it's just so dry. I know you're not gonna get the full picture looking at the swatch there, but if you could see this in real life on my hand, it just, it's very, very dry and it dries down so fast. So when I was putting this on, I had to do one side of my face blended in, then this side blended in, the nose blended in, the chin blended in, forehead blended in, because if I put this on my whole face, by the time I was done blending this, this part would not move. It was just 
just not the best formula, just not for me at all. Uh, so yeah, definitely a fail, but I do want to try it again. Okay, I have a cleansing balm. This is the Naturium Purple Ginseng Cleansing Balm. I did talk about this in my cleansing balm video. I think it was like drugstore cleansing balms, ranking them or rating them or something. Was I doing that? I don't even know. Okay, the smell. First off, the smell. I know that this has fragrance free. It's not like, um, it doesn't have a perfume or anything, but I feel like just because you're fragrance free doesn't mean you have to smell horrible. And this smells awful. Why do I keep smelling it? It's like one of those smells you just want to keep smelling because it smells so bad. It smells awful like lard and ugh, just really yucky. So this does not move, remove makeup very well. It sticks all over the lashes. It's really difficult to remove. It's so greasy. It's so greasy. I have to wash my face multiple times after this. Just I just don't enjoy this and for $20 I think that's way too expensive for a mediocre um, cleansing balm. Like this is not one I would recommend. If you're going for a cleansing balm at the drugstore, the e.l.f. Holy Hydration or Soap and Glory Glow Your Mind, those are the two best ones. This one, it's this is not it. Uh, I am going to continue using this. I've been removing swatches on my hands with this cleansing balm and I've been using it on my face but not on my eyes at all because it stings so much and it's very annoying to remove off of your lashes. Um, another cleansing balm I didn't like that I did return was the new one from Neutrogena, the one in the white container. I got that one at Sam's Club. I did take it back. And I noticed when I went to take it back, actually, that I accidentally charged myself for two of them because I did the scan and go thing. So you get to scan the stuff as you're shopping and I scanned it twice. So they gave me my refund twice, which is pretty cool. Anyway, that one, kind of the same thing. Really, really greasy, just really annoying to use. Have to wash my face multiple times afterwards. Uh, so yeah. Not a fan of those two cleansing balms. Okay, the internet's favorite razor. I finally tried it, I tried Billy. Okay, they finally got this stuff at Walgreens and I was so excited. I was like, yeah, cool, awesome. I can't wait to try it. I've been seeing that all over the internet. And we got this big old display in and it says on it, the internet's favorite razor. I think that's probably their tagline. So I thought, if the internet likes it, it's gotta be good, right? So I got the shaving cream and the little razor kit. So I got the Malibu starter kit, and Malibu just means the color. So I picked out the pink one. And this comes with the razor, the magnetic holder, and then two refills, which is kind of cool. But let's talk about the shaving cream first. So this is a squeezy bottle, but I thought this was an aluminum can until I had it in the shower. When I bought it, purchased it, looked at it, read it, I thought it was aluminum can the whole time until I opened the lid and I was like, oh, it's a squeeze container. And I, I guess I already knew I wasn't going to like this because I don't like shaving cream. The only kind of like shaving cream I like are the ones that feel like lotion. So um, Cremo is really good. The EOS ones are nice, if I remember correctly. I haven't tried them in a long time, but I remember using one that was like lotion. Uh, but more than anything, Conditioner is really great to use to shave with and so is just your body wash like use whatever you've been using You don't really need to buy a shaving cream and they're all the same all of them I have been using shaving creams or trying different ones for years and years and years until I learned better a few years ago um, All of them no matter what they say no matter if they say they hydrate no matter if they say they get the closest shave No matter what they're all the same. They all dry the heck out of my skin. I can put this on my arms, legs, whatever, shave just fine. Most of the time it clogs up the razor. And then as I'm rinsing off, just from having that shaving cream on my hands and on my, my skin, it feels like my skin is sticking together. So if I were to get my hand and my arm and just go like this, it would like stick to it like that. It just strips every ounce of good oils or whatever you had on your skin, it's gonna strip it off and you're gonna feel squeaky clean. I feel incredibly uncomfortable like that, super dry, super itchy. I did use this again this morning just to kind of, wait, does it really suck that bad? And yes, it does. I don't think shaving cream is a necessity. I really love lotions. Oh, Trader Joe's has a great one. I think it's just called Shave and it's like a shaving lotion, but it really feels like conditioner. So use your old conditioners that you don't like on your hair. Buy a really cheap one, like one of those big old things of suave. It'll last you forever. It's great to shave with because it's conditioning, it's softening, um, it's really smooth and it's not gonna strip your skin off. Use a body wash afterwards, you know, but this, no. Okay, the razor. Oh my goodness. 
I feel like I'm gonna go off the rails on this razor. If this is your favorite razor, I think that's great. Continue buying it, buy whatever works for you. But for me, this is the worst razor I have ever used for so many reasons. Okay, when I was in the shower trying to use this, I was getting so angry. I could feel my heart racing. I was just getting very, very, very mad at this for many reasons. I wanna show you the way that this looks. So this razor has the thing that I hate the most on women's razors. So if you've ever used Chic Intuition, those razors with that really big, it's almost like a small bar of soap, and then it has a little strip in the middle that's the razor. It's meant to kind of eliminate a shaving cream, I think, and it's meant to have like the soap touch your skin first, then the razor, then the soap again. And that way your skin's always kind of protected and like, you know, the shaving part is kind of has that little protective barrier. Whatever, I don't like it, but this has that. So it doesn't have as much, right? It has this like protective little thing around here. But what's the first part that's gonna touch your skin? It's this part because you're holding the razor. I'm gonna show you. You're holding the razor like this, right? So this is the first part that's gonna touch your skin. And on the razor, it's the part that has this little plastic thing. What is that little plastic thing there for? I have no idea. But it does have this little piece of the protectant thing that, you know, when you get, get it with water, it, you know, becomes like a little emollient thing. But then this touches your skin, then that plastic that kind of wipes it off, then the razor, then another piece here. But this, this stuff that they have created is so gross. It's so slimy. So you'll be using the razor and when you go to pick it up to like rinse it or whatever, this long string is going to connect from here to here like a mucus. It looks and feels so disgusting and it's almost too much. Like it creates so much goo that the razor I want to say about 60% of the time, it never even touched my skin. I would be going like this on my arm or wherever, and it would be so full of the goo that's all over the razor that the razor would not even be touching my skin. I would look at it and I'm like, it didn't even get there because of all the goo that this thing creates. That frustrated me so much, but you know, whatever, whatever. So let me show you my favorite razor from back here. Uh, this is the Gillette... Fusion Pro Glide, it's the best, it's number one. I've been using it since it came out, no joke, and I've never looked back. So this razor pivots back and forth, just like any you know razor does, back and forth. But it also pivots side to side, like this. So it gets over your knees, your elbows. You know, it's, it's meant to shave a man's face, so they made it pivot a lot to go around a jaw, maybe close to your nose, whatever. So it pivots all over the place, front and back, side to side. So I'm used to shaving my legs like this with no issue. I guess I'm so used to that that I thought this was gonna be the same and it's not. This doesn't pivot at all. It pivots like this just a little bit. Uh, I know the cap is on here and another gripe is I can't get the freaking cap off. I used this two times I haven't been able to use it again because this cap won't come off and I will try to demonstrate it for you. Anyway, this pivots only back and forth, not side to side, it's stuck like that. So I cut myself the first time I used this, cut my knee really bad because I thought this was gonna pivot around my knee bone and it didn't. So right away I was like, women's razors are not it, they're not it. Again, this cap won't come off. So they put this protective cap, a lot of razors come with a little plastic cap. This won't come off. I have tried to pull it from the side. I swear to God, if it comes off now, I'll be so mad. So, oh no, it came off. So I have tried to pull this from the side and the razor just comes off. I've tried to pull it from the top. This won't come off. Like, look how hard I'm pulling it. It's hurting my fingers. I tried to get it from this side. Nope, the razor comes off again. So I haven't been able to get this cap off. I even put it in water because I thought maybe it's stuck because of all that goo. And when I look at it up close, it's stuck because of all the goo. This thing is so slimy, like I said, that it has secured this plastic lid onto the razor. <gasps> I got it off. Did you see how hard I had to pull it? Look at this. Look at the goo situation. I'm sure you can see it. Look how gooped up it is. There's goo all over the side there. It's all over right there. 
That's what was stuck to this. I'm sure you can see the goo. Look at it. It's awful. It's gross. I don't like this at all. I'm 100% going to return it. It, no. That's one of the worst razors I've ever, ever, ever used and I will not recommend it or buy it ever. Gillette, Fru Gillette Fusion Pro Glide all the way. Like, I will never look back. I'm sorry, Gillette. I'm sorry I even tried something else. Anyway, I knew that was gonna make me angry. That is it. Let me know if you've tried any of these products and keep in mind, you know, if you love these things that I dislike for any reason, even the razor, it's just a razor. We don't all have to like the same things, you know? And the razor doesn't have any feelings. It doesn't care that I don't like it. But anyway, that is it. Let me know what some of your fails are recently. I would love to commiserate in the comment section down below. But yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And I will see you later in another video. Goodbye.